for March the 5th, 2018, we talk about Satisfactory, the 20th anniversary of EverQuest, and we ask you what game-related April Fool's joke you would run. Welcome to Level 280. My name's Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. And clearly, uh, Jala slash Ben are the, um, you know, glue that holds this group together. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's there's a little bit of a collision there. Uh, you're listening to, Lo- to The Level, the podcast uh, for people who love video games. Not the uh, podcast for people who love video games. No. It all stays in. It all stays in. There can only be one. <laughs> no, <laughs> see, I, I keep seeing... Um, seeing these you know i go to the grocery store and i'll be like oh fritos is the official snack of summer or whatever (laughs) so if they can do that we can be the official podcast of people who love video games okay fuck it let's just let's just claim it and see if anybody comes at us yeah oh god i've already gotten the suit (laughs) damn it come at me bro (laughs) No, so so Jala pays attention to the usual order, right? And Ben always goes last. So it, and I always go first. It's 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 always <laughs> so so with without the two of them, there there is no there there is no clear sense of who of who goes last is the is the thing. Mm-hmm. So oh well, but it it all it all stays in. It it it, it all stays in. Welcome, uh, welcome back, Dennis. How's how's things been? Thank you. They've been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of any exciting anecdotes. Um, just lots of lots of family fun. Did a lot of concerts recently. Mm. Went and saw Hosier play at the Grand Old Opry. That was awesome. Oh, cool. What, 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 yeah. what, who, who, who is Hosier? Hosier. Yeah, I, I think I'm saying it right anyway. Uh, he's like a folksy kind of artist. Uh, you might know him. His like big radio one is Take Me to Church. Okay. Um, which uh, is uh, is way less devout than you would imagine from the title. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, but he was amazing. The best thing was that he sounded exactly as good live as he did on the album. Oh, nice. And in fact, there are several, we listen to him on Spotify all the time. There are several live cuts where you don't realize it's a live cut until you get to the end. And you're like, thank you so much. This is wonderful coming out. <laughs> uh, you're like, oh my God. Those roots are a real, a real polished uh a real polished live presentation. See, yeah, he just, actually. Just very, go ahead. He actually just says that on his uh, studio recording. <laughs> to mess with people. I mean, like, like, like Kiss did that. Like, they they oh, they, really? they, they, they made a they, they made a quote unquote live album that oh, was just them, that was just them recording in the studio, and they just put like incredibly loud like crowd noises like cheering over it just over that's the entire fantastic. thing. <laughs> that's fantastic. I like oh. that. um yeah so that was good i also went and saw iron and wine play at the taft theater Hmm. um with the cincinnati symphony orchestra oh wow and he like he did his full um our endless numbers days album was one of three places in the country he did it he did it with the cincinnati symphony orchestra then he's going to do it with la and new york yeah so how cincinnati got on that list i don't know but it was awesome no idea so um, what is Iron and Wine? Because that sounds like that should be like, I don't know, a Conan the Barbarian movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> it is. If you take the opposite of Conan the Barbarian, you've got Iron and Wine. <laughs> yeah. Another another uh, very folksy, chill singer that is even more folksy and chill than Hosier. So. Yeah. yeah, the Taft is a good venue. I, it I is. Was, it's pretty I good. You can sit while you listen. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, were, were were they were they in the like in the basement, the like the ballroom, or were they uh, were they up in the like if they, if they had the symphony, they would be. Yeah, they were they were up on the main stage doing it big, um, but yeah, so that's it's been a musical couple of days here. That's cool. Yeah, how about you, David? How are things up in New York? Um, pr- pretty good. Uh, you know, enjoying finally getting um getting back to having decent weather. Um, and you know, sunlight during the day. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> we started up our, uh, martial arts group in the, um, oh, uh, in the park again, which was fun because that means I get to actually do some sparring. Hmm. So that was kind of fun, kind of knock, knock some of the rust off, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, 
literally in some cases. <laughs> oh yes, yes, very literally. I like that. So, you better watch out, buddy. I'm gonna knock the rust off of you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's you know that's I'm I'm actually um, workshopping that as my new you know catchphrase. <laughs> uh, you know. We're, so we're still in focus group testing. But it's a, it's we'll real. See. It's real specific. Not really versatile. I think. Right. Yeah. Well. You know what it is is I just I only fight rust monsters. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. No. That makes sense. It's very specific. Where do you find a lot of those in in New York? No, they're all uh, over the place. You, know, you, you you have to know where to look. You know, you you have to go to the right place, and then you know. Um, overturned discarded um you know steel drums and stuff and you know they just kind of skitter out hiding from the light so <laughs> propeller tails you know propelling them through this uh sewer water yeah why, why do you think the subways are such shit <laughs> so this is completely random but did you see the article uh, uh i might have been a while back now but it was talking about um apparently the baltimore subway system is so old and out of date they actually have a blacksmith on staff to uh repair some of the parts oh god really wow yeah it's like this this is how you know america has an infrastructure (laughs) problem oh man (laughs) yeah as for me i uh i don't know nothing nothing much going on i'm gonna have contractors here later this week putting in wired internet at in my house, but that is uh, not, Ooh, it, that it, sounds necessary. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, so I've got Wi-Fi and stuff, but uh, you know, in order to like, you know, uh, like I want to put a net network attacks, attached storage in my, uh, in my uh, uh, utility closet. I want to be able to stream uh, stuff to my steam link again, stuff like that. Um, I realize that's not so much an interesting story as it is a boring, I have a house and I want to do things to it story. So oh, don't, don't even lie for, for tech nerds. Wired internet is about as sexy as you can get. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm looking forward to I, it. I feel that says less about wild wired internet than it does about tech nerds. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to that. I got the new computer built and it's, 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 it's great. I uh, got to got to break it in with the game I'm going to be talking about uh, this time, uh, the, 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 this episode. Yeah, that's yeah, it's fine. It's it, it's 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 all good. Um, how do you guys feel about getting started? We got the we got the usual kind of show for you. You know what with the brief, a multiplayer, and a grind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, See, I I like how um, when Jala is not here to call you out, you have to like stick with the the correct uh, order. Well, I mean, uh, so I was about to get to the point where I, you know, kind of kind of tease, or kind of tease, and that Jala Jala wrote to me and said, "Hey, this time I think that you should begin with the brief, the brief, where we talk about things that are going on in the world of video games around us." Jala didn't actually say that. I I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to put words in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Dennis, what's going on with this new Battle Royale game? Yeah, can I, can I, can I talk to you guys about my cycle real quick? Um, <laughs> this could go a bunch of different ways. Uh, so I'm going to say yes. I, I appreciate you leaning in like that. No, so there's a new game coming out from Jaeger, which is the developer that made... Um, more infamously, uh, Spec Ops The Line, less mm-hmm. infinitely, infamously Dreadnought, although Dreadnought was a great game. Hmm. They are now coming out with a third game in an entirely new genre and putting a very interesting twist on it. So the game is called, I can't understand, it's got to be a working title name, but yeah. it's called The Cycle. Okay. <laughs> and it's a battle royale game, which, you know, take a shot, of course. Everyone's getting in on that. But they're pitching it as a battle royale game for people who don't like battle royale games. Okay. A battle royale game for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's basically a a big open world um, questing is the focus of it though versus fighting. So you drop in with however many other people, and I, I forget the exact number that they're they're pitching, but you know a, a large group of people. And you are assigned a number of contracts. The contracts are random. They require you to do everything from um, gather a certain amount of materials to killing a certain type of enemy. And I don't mean other players. The world is populated with 
lots and lots of um, non-player enemies. So it's a lot of PVE. Um, and there, you know, there's a, a ton of other objectives that you might be given. And in a round of 15 minutes, which is the cycle, and um, excuse me, which is the cycle, you try to complete as many of these contracts as you can and then get to the escape pod to get off the planet before it becomes too inhospitable. Huh. Um, as time goes on, the planet gets more and more dangerous. The enemies get more and more dangerous. But you can also use some of those materials that you've collected to craft better equipment so that you can weather those storms better. Huh. Um, so, okay, all makes sense. When you encounter another player, though, that's where things get interesting. Because you could kill them. And you can take them out, uh, and they will just die and respawn. And you, you get a, a small reward from it, but it's not a huge reward. Or you can propose teaming up with them. Okay. And form an alliance. Oh, and please then you tell me you can betray. Player. Can you betray? You can betray. <laughs> betray confer. Um, <laughs> so you can, you can team up with them. That gives you double the manpower against all these contracts that you're trying to accomplish. And at any point, should you decide, you can choose to betray that person and the alliance, and then try to gun them down for a couple extra credits, hmm. uh, with all of the with all the dangers that that implies, and knowing that they might do it to you. So it's a very colorful world. Like um, it, it's so interesting to see, you know, after Spec Ops: The Line, which was very, you know, Call of Duty, and then you know Dreadnought, which was space simmy, like a light uh, elite dangerous. Uh, this looks almost like Fortnite meets a little bit of Borderlands, a little bit of cartooniness. Mm -hmm. um, very Battle Royale in, in summation, unfortunately. <laughs> but the idea is so, so interesting. And, uh, and I'm excited. Uh, it, this, is, this is nothing more than a thing is happening. It's an alpha right now. It goes into beta sometime in May. Yeah. But I, I love this idea of giving people more verbs with other, other people in a Battle Royale game than just shoot. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, you know, part of the part of the huge thing about Battle Royale is that kind of winnowing down of the play field, not so much physically, although I know that's a part of it, but of the, the you know the actual competitors. Right. You know, eventually it is, you know, if not the two best people in the you know, in, in the game facing off against each other, it is at least the two people who have managed to survive the longest. Yes. <laughs> and that is, and, you know, and that is where a good deal of the tension comes from, right? Is there is there a similar winnowing down um, that, you, that 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 you can tell, or is it literally just okay? We're going to go out and try and score as many of these contract points so we can earn passage off. Yeah, that is hard to say. Yeah, uh, just just from the article that I I'm I'm using for this, it is clear that things get more and more dangerous on the planet, and that at the end there is a single exit point. Mm -hmm. So um, that in, in itself will kind of provide a, a winnowing or a focusing point for everyone to head towards. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there, it seems like you will be able to kind of run amok on the map where you like yeah. to try to finish contracts, which has because the primary way you, you score points and the way you win is by completing the most contracts. There's a risk and reward. Do I go take this lucrative contract on the other side of the map knowing I'll have to book it? to get back mm -hmm. to the escape pod and everyone will be camping, you know, <laughs> camping, <laughs> waiting for a couple extra kills. Right. Or do I kind of just take something that's closer and smaller and know that I can get to the escape pod first? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I understand it right now. I, I could have that wrong. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I wonder how with, without the focus being um, conflict, how they can uh, maintain the drama, which even though I'm, I've been bad at any of these that I've tried that has been kind of, I guess I was not bad at Tetris 99 regardless. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, 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 the drama was the thing that was like, Oh yeah. Like that is, that is the genius part of this formula. So they give a couple examples of contracts and, and items in the world that could give us a hint on how they might uh, enforce that. The first one that they give an example of is you can pick up this light shard which just gives you continuous points as long as you're uh, holding it. And was a zeal shard, excuse mm -hmm. me. And uh, the longer they hold it, the more points you get. But it puts you on the radar for every other player in the map. And certain players might get a contract to go oh. get the zeal shard. Yeah. So there's that. That's that. Uh, that that's, that's pretty elegant. That's like um, a. It's it's like that uh, playground game with a name that I literally cannot say out loud in 2019. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, so. I'll, I'll, I'll bleep it out. Uh, one second here. Uh, s- smear the. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I never understood, like, how that was a, a game that was even tacitly allowed. Because, I mean, <laughs> it's basically, you know, institutionalized fight club. Pretty much. Yeah, but... I... <laughs> Uh, the, more and more of our childhoods is becoming. <laughs> I have that reaction too. Yeah, I'm like, oh wow, okay, yeah. So we the, we just did that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was homeschooled, so I was above all of that philistine. I, I, I played I played that lots with my brother. Uh, yeah. you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, I've got to say that's 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 a sport. I uh, obviously, like you said, it would need a rebranding. But I would love that to become the the new hipster, like let's be adults and play, you know, have like a dodgeball league or whatever. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Anyway, I mean, I you know, I pick my son up at daycare, and it's a room full of four year olds, and they basically have a permanent game of that going unofficially. <laughs> Just everyone's getting knocked down by everyone else constantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that's one. <laughs> the uh, the other one is there will be lightning storms where like. Um, a certain type of other shard shows up and everyone can see where those happen and they're very lucrative. So it kind of pulls people towards, but that, you know, it's interesting if, if you want to just go find a hidey hole, wait for the escape pod and leave. That's great. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Good on you, but you're not going to win. Um, and that's dimension of these kind of battle royale games, which has always been true. Uh, in that, you know, you can, you can hide, but you'll, you won't be kitted out right for the final fight. Uh, it's just enforced in a slightly different way. Yeah. So interesting stuff, and I'm I'm excited to see how it develops. Yeah. Uh, a thing is happening. Uh, it 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 certainly is, and um, my hope uh, is that this works out well for Jaeger. I like that studio. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Like that studio. Hate that booze. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jaeger reminds me of now. Also, though, I I do have to say now that we're done with legitimate, um. Like commentary, I do have to give my snarky thing. I feel like a alternate, uh, oh, you know, read on this could be Jaeger announces they have invented PvP servers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I've got one that is uh, kind of a thing is happening, and also kind of a reminder that in in reality, wholesome things rule. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, they, 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 that is a thing I firmly I'm, I'm believe. I'm giving you the side eye, but go on. <laughs> Wholesome things rule. If something is, oh yeah, no, it's that I, I, I am fine dying on that hill. Uh, however, uh, so I forget a few years ago. I forget if we ever did a story about this. Uh, I feel like it's been it's been brought up on the show. Do you guys know who Skyrim Grandma is? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, not I. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so Skyrim grandma, uh, she is an 82 year old woman currently 82, 82 years old. Uh, she 82 years young, rather that is the broadcast standard. Um, (laughs) and a few years, a few years back, uh, she was encouraged, I believe by a family member, or she said, Hey, fuck it. I'm going to do it myself. Uh, and she started doing, uh, let's plays, of Skyrim because she loved the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. She put them up on YouTube uh, and they're really nice. Like she's good at the game and she like knows the stuff, but she talks like a grandma does. <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, she, she's got like a half million YouTube subscribers. Again, wholesome things rule. Uh, and, uh, you know, Bethesda in kind of a PR move, I suppose, uh, Bethesda, uh, has said, you know what, we appreciate what you're doing so much. We, we, we were, you know, we're super, so excited about this. We're going to make you a character in elder scrolls six. Huh. So they brought her into the studio. Like she got to meet Todd Howard. There was a very awkward video of Todd Howard interacting with this awesome older lady. Um, and they are scanning her. They have scanned her and she's going to be included uh, as a character in this upcoming video game, uh, which I imagine 
uh, just makes her really happy. She she even says like, "Wow, I I can't believe it." There's you know in in the aforementioned awkward video, <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, this <laughs> the, the, this rules," and I agree, Shirley Shirley, which, which is her name. Uh, that does rule, <laughs> and you rule. This is great. Here's the thing: it would almost be more awkward if she wasn't awkward. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if she if she was the one who was like if together. She, and she's like, too right, man. Word, I'm excited to be in this video game. Sup? If she was just, <laughs> like, she was no just talking really. like it, like like an actual streamer or an actual yeah. listener. <laughs> what's up, dipshits? What Smash that bell. <laughs> Grannystreams.ttv, what's up? <laughs> oh, fuck. So so good. I'm glad that like you said wholesome things rule. She should not know how to interact with people in a uh rad gaming studio because yeah she's a wonderful granny <laughs> yeah like she has an excuse for being kind of like oh the camera's pointed at me that's that's that that's different uh todd howard is the one i think who was bringing most of the awkward heat oh well then shame on him yeah uh <laughs> I, I there's gotta be somewhere a video of her yelling fuss roda and my life will not be complete <laughs> until i see it uh, you can you can come through she's like she's got you know she, she, she's she's got that playthrough up mm -hmm. yeah Half million subscribers, ah. <laughs> and 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 that is all. That, 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 that is my story. A cool thing happened to uh, somebody who seems to be pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Let's see here, David. You just put yours in, so I don't know how to uh, how to hint it. So let me take a look here. Um. What's to, what has turned twenty years old? Yeah, so um, EverQuest, um, and with it, the 3D MMO genre. Pretty um, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know. I mean, you look at it, and you say, oh, yeah, that game's 20 years old as fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man, I, I look at myself, and I say, I, I, I wasn't 11 when this came out, or I wasn't 12 when this came out. Screw you. Yeah. yeah it's um you know everquest is i i was never quite into it ne you know nearly as much as uh oh you were uh a lot of it because like i actually got into it fairly late in its life mm -hmm. sort of um yeah. i say sort of because it's had this weird thing where you know I started playing it, um, what, like two or three years uh, before um, World of Warcraft came out? Yeah. Which I would kind of consider, you know, I'm doing air quotes, the end of its life, except for the fact that, like, it's still running. Yeah, it's still so, running. And I, th I think it's even, like, it's it's even outlasted um, EverQuest 2. I don't believe EQ2 is still running. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Uh, I would not be surprised. So one, one, one of the things that caught my eye... Uh, is um, apparently there have been um, 25 expansions released, mm -hmm. and the um, so for people who haven't played, um, you know, EverQuest um, has much more um, explicit zones than uh, most modern MMOs do. Hmm. Uh, you know, you actually have to load in, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And yeah. apparently, there are 1,600 uh, playable areas. Yeah, I believe it. So, Man. um, yeah, go on. 20, 25 expansions and they still haven't been able, been able to add armor that covers more than 5% of a woman's body. <laughs> Eventually, so you every, like, it's it, it a is feature. it is regrettable <laughs> that they put that they put Furiona Vi on every one of their covers because she is not actually indicative. There is plenty of armor that does cover up the ladies. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just in their art. It's just in the thing that everything sees that they are aggressive and gross. <laughs> it's just I, in the I, way they represent themselves to yeah. the world. It's not how it actually is. <laughs> uh, unless unless you create a uh, you know female wood elf, in which case uh, you spawn without pants. Yeah, you're basically in lingerie. Um, no, uh -huh. I, I misspoke. EverQuest Two got an expansion, uh, Chaos Descending, as recently as uh, November 2018. So, wow. Oh. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I always have really um, kind of bittersweet feelings when I uh, look back on um, EverQuest, just because it's interesting to see a game that kind of was designed first and foremost to, you know, trying interesting things as opposed to being, you know, just 
super homogenized and focus grouped. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it yep. was designed specifically when they thought it was going to be like a pay for a pay per minute model. So like a lot of the Ooh. a lot of the early stuff was was i mean a, like a little bit more of a predatory version of like pay to win or whatever which is okay we just need things to last for a long time and then they got rid of that model and made it a you know before launch they made it into a um into a flat rate like monthly fee kind of thing um right. you know uh and so but but a lot of those conventions still stuck around so okay. Uh, we... I just love, for example, the fact that, you know, if you want to learn new languages, you have to do do so by immersion. Literally, <laughs> you know, the more you hear other players chat in a language your character doesn't understand and just gets garbled text, yeah. the more you learn it. Yeah. And, and like, that's, that's one awesome. of those, that's one of those things that I, that I love I love in principle, right? Because, you know, you end up with something like that is a significant um, downside to playing an Ixar, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, the lizard race, they, they they don't speak common the way that everybody else does. Uh, you know, most of the other races at least have, you know, they share a language in common with at least one or two others, you know, at least in their faction or what have you. No, the Ixar, like, they, they go to a new place and they just can't understand anything. But, like, with any of those things, it just inspired degenerate play where I would be sitting in the, you know, in the Western, or no, in the Eastern common lands, like, in the tunnel, just, like, listening to somebody speak the Dark Elf language over and over again. Like, they would just type the same garbage sentence to, to train up that skill. To be fair, how is that different than foreign language classes? Okay, point taken. <laughs> <laughs> so uh sim similar uh ones uh that i'm actually surprised hasn't been replicated is just the fact that you know any any race can um you know completely switch their factions if they want to if they put a lot, enough effort into it yeah you can and oh go on you can grind for a faction like you could you, you could just go to a city and fight their enemies until until the you know people would would con or consider kindly toward you right and That's similarly hilarious. similarly you could um you know i know this affected uh you more than me but you could also screw up your faction um for example <laughs> if you're playing as a paladin uh the you were basically aligned um opposite to the city guard for the city where your guild is yeah. So you would uh, very quickly be relegated to having to sneak in through the sewers. Yep, <laughs> along with <laughs> along with the uh, like the like the necromancers and the thieves and such. Yeah, no, thieves thieves were fine. Oh, uh, I, for I forgot about that. Yeah, no. yeah, the, and and it actually worked out well because uh, thieves were were the faction that you technically, if you wanted to you could ally with the thieves guild and like build faction with both. Oh, nice. All yeah, right. So guys, they... oh, with, gone. without, without looking, without looking, I want you guys to guess what 25 expansions in with 25th expansion, what stat did they finally add to the game? Charisma. I got nothing. They <laughs> added the luck stat finally. Oh, huh. Okay. Which randomly and, increased the amount of gold you, in your split, the amount of critical damage you do, and your chance to succeed in a trade skill combine. Trade skill combine? Yeah. Yeah. Sim, uh, and to give you an idea, this is uh, coming from a game that years ago, more than, what, 10 years ago now, had the alcohol tolerance skill. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a thing, right? Like alcohol would give you stats, but it but it would also make you drunk. So like the more you drank, the more you got the stats without getting the, you know, the crazy warped vision and the wibbly walk. That's right. Great. But it depend it depends on what you're doing. If you're a warrior, great idea. If you're <laughs> a uh wizard, less so. Yeah. <laughs> I just, man, I am so fucking nostalgic for this game. And like, I've got the source books for the EverQuest tabletop game. Like, on um, my, like, you know, I keep, I just keep books that I can just look at, just, you know, reference, sure. almost like co coffee table books or whatever. 
um like in my in my bedroom like on my nightstand if i just want something to look at while i'm falling asleep i've got like the everquest atlas that just has these really beautifully drawn <laughs> completely non-functional maps of the different zones as of the planes of power expansion along with like um you, along with like lore descriptions of what this area is and who lived there like i was all in on this and kind of continued to be without having played it really for t 10 15 years yeah. Is it is it a uh, free to play now? It looks like it might be. Yeah, yes, yeah, it is. So it's free to play, but you 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 pay for um, extras like extra inventory space. You pay to get extra characters and stuff like that. But if you just wanted to like sign up, um, you could even do like a, they've got uh, a, like a 2002 version of the game. Like at, <laughs> at least the last time I looked at this, which was 2012, you would be able to go on to a server that was just that just had everything pinned to the planes of power era i believe um and that would that would notably be pre-plane of knowledge right no planes of power had planes of not had had uh the, the plane of knowledge so you oh, did have okay. the warp yeah which hmm. is a bummer okay. because travel time is another one of those things that like they they rightfully patched out because it's not for everybody but the idea that just kind of like moving across the continent was both dangerous and kind of like not free from a time yeah. and investment kind of kind of thing. That's <laughs> one of the things that really disappoints me because even though it got rid of a lot of it, like original uh, World of Warcraft had that uh, for in particular for anyone that plays a night elf. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, kind of the rite of passage of, you know, running across a ludicrous, ludicrously high level zone <laughs> to get to where all the rest of the, um, uh, all the rest of your faction was. And, you know, that's the sort of thing that was just like every day in EverQuest. <laughs> I'm happy you that's brought this. Stuff. I like thinking about EverQuest. So I um I clicked on the you know play free thing uh and without realizing it that takes you to create an account for just Daybreak Studios like mm. the generic page for them but I didn't realize it was generic because they got a bunch of EverQuest imagery on there mm -hmm. and I looked at them like holy shit Batman is in EverQuest <laughs> <laughs> twenty five <laughs> expansions I, I guess <laughs> um but no it's it's just daybreak has worked on something batman at some point yeah um but yeah if there's a free-to-play option and people are feeling nostalgic i mean guys let me know we can we can uh Shit, man make a run on everquest at some point just, just for the tourism just for the just for the tourism yeah no we, we did uh we did the waff one year anniversary uh which was seven years ago fuck uh no <laughs> coming up on eight years ago fuck fuck um <laughs> <laughs> and and that was um <laughs> we did uh uh you know, did a little section on, on EverQuest there uh just because it was like oh I I even forget what what the reason was but yeah, yeah, yeah. went in and like I you know like my my character is still there on Furion of I the guild is still there but nobody's oh, on wow yeah no <sighs> this is uh this is good stuff you yeah. Um, shit. I, I, I think we need to move off of this because I could prob <laughs> I could probably just talk about like 15 year old EverQuest shit for hours. So podcast in there somewhere. It is not this podcast. Uh, probably not this one. So <laughs> let's end this section, I guess. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Uh, normally on the, uh, zeros and fives, we would do a free play, but we're recording this on April fool's day. So Dennis, what is the question that you asked these, uh, jolly fools? And I mean, fools like in a, in a good, like I guess tarot way in a, in a, in a nice way. Yeah. yeah. In a friendly way. Uh, so yeah, for, for April fools, rather than trying to pull anything over on you guys, other than not doing a free play, um, <laughs> we, uh, we asked about what you would contribute to the April fools announcement madness that ined inevitably happens every year. So, yeah. um, lots of video game companies do some kind of April fools announcement. Um, this year, I think the, the best one I've seen today was razors, uh, ping everywhere app. Okay. You seen that? No, no. Basically, talking to friends is a drag, and ping systems are so um, effective in games that they have an app you can download on your phone and just point and ping at things to to replace talking to your friends. 
So you don't have to say, hey, donuts are here. You just put down the donuts and ping them. Huh. Or ping where you want to go to lunch, and maybe your friends will follow you there. You don't have to interact. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I wanted to hear what our, what our listeners thought uh, a good headline would be yeah. that is just plausible enough to whip the internet into a frenzy. Good jokes. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to get us started here with Ollie, who says, I'd simply leak a really convincing Smash Brothers Ultimate character screen with Waluigi on it. And a date. Oh. See, that's no fair. Like that, like the p- part of the problem is uh, people want that, <laughs> and yeah. you're just getting their <laughs> hopes up. <laughs> oh, also, I'm going to be critiquing all of your answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be, re- you know, so nothing N- Nintendo does will surprise me. Um, but uh, it it would be. It is beyond reason to me that they have not just like said, okay, Waluigi's coming and he is twenty five dollars. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh. Um, let's see, David, what does Roop say? He says, as part of, of savings, Activision Blizzard is selling their original Sierra intellectual properties back to the game writers. Fuck, man. <laughs> Again, things things people want. I was just going to turn into a really painful multiplayer. <laughs> it just when we get down to mics, uh, yeah, that that will also be so. Ugh. Man, <laughs> uh, Dennis, what does Jeremy say? <laughs> uh, he says Sekiro to add multiplayer and battle royale modes this spring. I mean, Miyazaki has said he's kind of curious about making something in the battle royale genre. Why not start here? See, yeah. just just plausible enough. <laughs> I I just figured Dark Souls was the battle royale genre. You just never realized it. Like <laughs> no one ever tells your character. You're always a little, although <laughs> the, the battle royale formula would be a little bit undercut by the uh, idea that everybody just gets back up when they die. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I just figure it's uh, Dark Souls is basically uh, Battle Royale plus Quantum Immortality. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so it's just Battle Royale that is taking place on a glacial scale. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mike says, major games publishers come together to announce mass uniz- unionization of its workforce. Yeah. <laughs> Good April Fool's joke. <laughs> Anything in America having a, you know. It, successful labor movement would be uh, yeah i now i wish i had some alcohol um <laughs> <laughs> what was you gonna say dennis uh just i keep on seeing headlines that this is about to happen Not yes actually happened. There, there, there there are movements and they're, they're like there, there is definitely uh as you know especially even like uh websites as well they're they're getting ready is for it, it. isn't though this seems like the industry that would be least able to unionize because its whole problem is hey it's incredibly easy to replace people yeah like and the whole problem you know with the industry innately means you can break any union at any time yeah may, may, maybe but least able also probably implies uh most necessary oh yeah <laughs> i was gonna say that that statement is true of anything that's tried to unionize yeah for the most part yeah this is <laughs> I, my, my 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 lefty is showing and that's not what this podcast is about <laughs> um, let's see david what does chase say chase says legend of zelda taming the wild sequel to the still popular breath of the wild taming the wild puts you back in the boots of the hero of hyrule for his most challenging task yet agriculture <laughs> coming to ios and android help link till the land raise cows and defend his home from moblins in this groundbreaking idol game uh get it groundbreaking oh, yeah yeah uh, uh, <laughs> very good pretty good yeah um i, I play uh, the fuck out of this yeah this sounds awesome good idea chips. i feel, feel like this is so, the april fourziness though is slightly undercut by the fact that my time playing Zelda is already 90% cutting grass. <laughs> so they've already. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've and, already and the cringe engine. elements you could just add in wholesale and yeah. man, that'd be perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. I told you, like, I, I have a friend who straight up, like, I, I don't know why she doesn't get, like, Skyrim because basically she plays 
Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild straight up like Skyrim. It is a, <laughs> uh, you know, a foraging and cooking simulator. Combat is completely incidental. <laughs> Man, just like raising yourself an army of cuckoos. <laughs> yeah, this is this is great. I want this very badly. <laughs> um, and I believe it too. I'd actually believe that they'd do it. So, huh? Good one. Uh, let's see, Dennis. What does Greg say? He says Diablo Four, Elder Scrolls Six, and System Shock Three are being changed to be free-to-play mobile games, with progress being gauged by how much they suck from your wallet by greedy game companies. I mean, kind of already happened with Diablo Four, right? I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> System Shock could be weird. <laughs> Just wait. I thought Diablo Four hadn't been announced. It hadn't been announced, but um, we talked about it a while back. Blizzard teamed up with. Uh, what is widely considered to be a Chinese uh, shovelware developer that does uh, it's okay Chinese shovelware developer that makes free to play or pay to win um, kind of like grindy games and reskinned Dross. it. Dross is the word. Dross, for. yes. Um, to, uh, uh, and basically just like, hey, can you reskin this with Diablo? Then they went up at BlizzCon and you know announced we've got a new Diablo game for you. It's <laughs> this. Um, and they seemed to be surprised that people weren't so enthused about it. So kind of already happened with Diablo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Lindsay says in honor of its 36th birthday, super Mario brothers is getting a remaster. That's right, folks. And with all new levels, plus no pay to win features. Also, we <laughs> added Yoshi. You're welcome. <laughs> nothing makes me more suspicious of pay to win features than a part of the announcement being no pay to win features oh yeah no that, that, that post has too much <laughs> Lindsay adds here there's an update update we actually have confirmation that there will be a pay to win feature in this remaster <laughs> i didn't see that i swear to god i did not read that before i said that <laughs> princess in another castle no problem just 9.99 will solve that problem <laughs> oh man you know me so well <laughs> set and spike right there <laughs> Um, <laughs> david what does zach say zach says oculus is making the switch vr wouldn't that just be an incredibly awkward google um cardboard yeah <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be like like you know an awkward google cardboard and then a bunch of ibuprofen for the uh for the inevitable neck pains yeah, I, I got to say, though, the little like bird thing in the uh, Switch Labo VR demo made me so happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot about the Labo VR, man. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. So my, my my joke is an actual thing and and, <laughs> and nobody corrected me. <laughs> how can you do that? How, how dare I you? Mean, I mean, I just assumed you were, you know, pointing out the fact that, you know, life is ultimately a joke. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I am the comedian from Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, David, what does Spencer say? Or no, Dennis, what does Spencer say? I want to turn. I want to yeah, read Spencer's answer. Yeah. Uh, he says there are currently no plans for another Skyrim remake. They're out of systems for a while, aren't they? Uh, the next generation will be announced soon. Mm, okay. Yeah. <sighs> Man. Is, is, is it on the Apple Watch yet? No. No. Are you sure you don't want to check before answering? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Uh... I'm pretty. I'm and now I've got to mute that. Um, I'm pretty sure. Um, these are good. These are good. Mm -hmm. Uh, in lieu of coming up with my own, because I don't think I can be funny on the spot like that. Um, I haven't been able to in the past. I want to share my favorite one that I saw. Uh, yeah. this year. Uh, <laughs> which is just, I, 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 I just, before we started recording, I, I looked at a list of all of them. Um, and it just said it's a list on Destructoid and it's just a, a single entry, uh, that could suffice as the headline. Kirby is now square. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in. I'll, I'll, I'll share the, uh, the original tweet with you. It's in, it's in Japanese, which I do not read, but uh that there is there is a url kirby.jp slash square kirby <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> so that's mine uh, you guys can either make up your own or share your favorite one that you've seen 
Uh, I've got one. Okay. I, I think it's actually something the world needs, which is uh, the announcement of the Battle Pass Pass. Uh, as the Battle Pass format has become more and more popular for free-to-play games, it's starting to get frustrating for players who don't want to have to split their time or worry that by playing one game, they're falling behind on their Battle Pass for the other. So with the Battle Pass Pass, you buy it and instantly get five levels on every game that has a Battle Pass. And then a percentage of your experience from the game that you're playing's Battle Pass will also be applied to all the other Battle Passes that you own. Therefore, allowing you to keep up with all your favorite games. Does anybody else smell toast? Like burnt <laughs> toast? <laughs> but I, I feel like the core problem with this is that you only play one of these games, and even if they give you everything in the Battle Pass for free, it's still not worth it. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Yeah. How about you, David? It's- so um, I'm going to uh, take the uh, core approach on this, and um, I enjoyed uh, the Division 2 and um, Anthem swapped um, this year okay. on their Reddits. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you go to uh, either of them, they uh, have all of the styling and graphics and stuff from the opposite one. Yeah. Um, I... I don't play it, so I haven't been able to check out, but apparently um, Ubisoft also went pretty all in with their stuff for um, uh, Rainbow Six Siege and releasing some sort of weird game mode where you're like, I I don't know, I guess like fighting sparkly unicorns and oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I saw um, this one. Yeah, I think my overall favorite one, though, although it's not gaming, is uh, Stack Overflow, which is one of the main um, websites for programmers. Uh, went went back to a you know straight up '90s style, like you know excessive, uh, you know everything's animated and glittery and stuff like that. Um, That's fun. Design. See, I like those. Um, you, you know, just if something is done by a publication um because the thing that i generally don't like i'm going to the here's where i get cranky is that the punchline for a lot of these jokes is actually it was a commercial yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that, that 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 is all that is all the cranky i will be or or i feel like similarly the uh i get frustrated with the like you said the things people actually want and the joke is we're never going to give it to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> see that that's why i liked the the razor ping system the best yes. because that was you know that's that's you know a step to the side of what they do and uh yeah and uh kind of fits that mole or or fits that bill of of not not taunting in <laughs> in having a funny joke yes mm-hmm. yeah um, cool. Well, thank you for your creativ- creativity, everybody. If you want to participate in these in the future, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast. And thank you, Dennis, for putting this up. Mm-hmm. The grind. Now it is time for the grind where we talk about the things we have been playing over the past period of time or so. Dennis, it's been a while since you've been on, so I will defer to you here first. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to talk this week because I have stats to talk about. Stat? Oh shit! All yes. right. So I um you, oh, go ahead. You, you last time you talked about keeping track of your Apex Legends stats. Mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you wanted to you wanted to, to apply some big data to yourself. What uh what, what are your findings? Yeah, I big dated myself. I, I think the findings are. I more believe the technical term is the quantitized self. Yeah, <laughs> the quantitized self, indeed. Um, I found I found more interesting things in relation to my teammates than myself. Okay. Um, but there are some interesting things for myself do, as well. Do you know when your teammates um, are going to die in real life? What's that? <laughs> or do you know when your teammates are going to die in real life? Um, I have a projection. I wouldn't say I know. You know? <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, it's a va- it's a, it's an actuarial table. So, yeah. like, I know to a pretty good um, kind of probabilistic certainty. However, you know. Yeah. Um, no, so my, my, my kill death ratio is right at one. Um, I, my placement on average out of 20 is just under 10. So 9.47 to be precise. Okay. Uh, so I, I am a thoroughly average player. Okay. Um, 
But the more interesting thing is, as I've, I've kept track of all the stats that it gives you on your teammates as well as you, I've gotten some insights on how all these characters are being used and how people who play these characters tend to perform. Um, so the, the meme uh, on either end of Apex Legends is where I will start, uh, which is Wraith is ha- the the character that everyone has grown to hate as like the Twitch streamer mandatory character. Um, And so if you, if you are a douchebag who likes to go off on your own and try to be the hero, uh, you are probably playing Wraith. Weird. Uh, So, 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 so Wraith is this game's Reaper. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) a little bit. Huh? So it's funny if, if I played, that would be the uh, player or the character I would play as entirely based on um, uh, da- danger sense uh, or whatever the ability is, because that is the thing that pisses me off the most about Battle Royale games is being sniped out of nowhere. Yeah, so anyone not familiar, her passive ability, um, a voice in her her head tells her when someone is aiming down the sights at her, when is, is targeting her. Huh. And so you can then communicate that to your teammates and, and scramble for cover. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, unless you're playing Wraith, in which case you're not playing with your teammates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Um, and David, you would not be allowed to play Wraith because you don't have TTV at the end of your name. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> However, in the stats, um, so I, I main Lifeline, is, who's mostly a support character. She's got a bunch of healing and can get gear for her team. Um, so know that, that all these stats are a little bit skewed because any time that Lifeline is available to pick, I pick her. Um, but Wraith was chosen um, close to the most frequently. So Bloodhound, which is like a tracking character, was actually chosen the most at 20%. Wraith was just behind him or her at um 19 percent, i should say them because bloodhound is actually a non-binary character i believe um and then just below wraith is bangalore which is like your kind of soldier person she's the soldier 76 of apex legends okay at 18 percent, and everything else kind of jumps down from there across nine characters um but that that's that's relatively in line with my expectations mm-hmm also in line with my expectations, roughly, is who is at the top of the average kills that a teammate gets. Um, with Wraith coming in at the top, um, 1.35 kills per game. So they, they, you know, yes, if you're playing with the Wraith, they are going to get more kills. That's that, that holds with the stereotype, right? Okay. It gets interesting from there, because the second most kills is Pathfinder. Who is the huh. affable, good-natured, apparently murder robot in Apex <laughs> Legends? Legends. Um, who loves his zip lines and is everyone is his friend, and he just seems to be very good at killing his friends. Go figure. Uh, third place going to Octane, which is the character that was added most recently, about um, whenever the battle pass released, so a week, a week and a half ago, something like that. Um, and that's that. My guess on why he's up there, and this is pure storytelling, is that, you know, anyone who's more invested in the game, therefore probably better at the game, is investing the the money to get him or the currency, in-game currency, to get him. Uh, so maybe that skews towards more skilled players. At the bottom of the list, however, is poor, poor Caustic, who is a beefy boy okay, uh, and throws around a lot of gas, gassy, beefy boy. Uh, does not do so well. <laughs> Please don't say gassy, beefy boy ever again. <laughs> but uh, if, he... if not, how will we get a title? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> um, close, right, right, right with him. Just only very slightly higher. I, I should say, by the way, this is across 162 games. So 324 teammates Okay, uh, is the data set for this. Um, just above him is Gibraltar, who is the other beefy boy of the Apex Legends universe. And he is um, widely panned for being an absolute unit in terms of hitbox Mm-hmm. Um, and and just not being a very good character. And in fact, he is, let's see here, yep, he is dead last in percentage picked. He's only picked 4% of the time. So poor, poor Gibraltar. Huh. Doesn't get any kills, never gets picked. Uh, just kind of sad. That is until you look at average rank when I play. So where you place, that, you know, first place to 20th place um, when I play with these characters. 
and Gibraltar is all the way at the top. He is number one <laughs> in average place. Huh. Which is incredible. Like that, I never would have guessed that. That has to be some kind of anomaly, though. Like, is is his relative? So, so like th- this isn't weighted by by like incidents. It's just literally if somebody picks Gibraltar, they uh, they have a higher probability of rating higher of rating. Have highest? a higher probability of winning. You won't of you winning. won't get as many kills, but you have a distinctly higher percentage chance of winning. Specifically, when the complaint against him is that he's so big that you know, <laughs> like he, he is the broadside of a barn. He's he's just this big goober boy that nobody likes. Now he again <laughs> maybe maybe the fact that he was picked. A smaller percentage at the time is is part of the reason why. So maybe maybe it's skewed there. But I mean, yeah. the data doesn't lie. Gibraltar yeah. way up at the top, number one in uh, in average rank. <laughs> yeah, just um, if, I mean, if if I look at that kind of disparity, that ha- like that feels like an out like an that either, either feels like an outlier or it feels like there is some connection that I, I have not seen or identified. I think I think when a Gibraltar is on the team, everyone else feels so bad for him that they think <laughs> the best to try to redeem it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, so it, that was super interesting. Um, Mirage was second in average place, followed by Bloodhound, who, if you remember, was the most picked. So at least that one is is makes sense for him being picked frequently and getting consistently good placements. I was slightly vindicated to see Wraith all the way down in seventh in hmm. average place. Okay. So that uh everyone who's uh, reflexively picking her that that puts you in in your place. Ha ha ha. Right. But yeah, Gibraltar is the secret best character in the game in terms of uh who you should pick if you want to win. Turns out. Yeah, go figure. Yeah. Uh and that's huh. that's my Apex Legends big data so far. At least as much <laughs> as I've been able to uh to parse it. Oh, yeah. um hey, you, not surprisingly. You, oh, go you, ahead. You you laid out the sample size. You you're you're you're, you're fine disclosure wise. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so not surprisingly, if you want the, the character who survives the longest, gets the most revives and gets the most respawns, uh, is all the same and it's lifeline. Okay. Um, and I, I qualify that by saying that does not include my data and I pick lifeline as often as I can. So it'd be okay. interesting if I layered in my data on top of that, um, how that would change. Right. But she, she is, and that that's not surprising because she has the most survivability, kind of abilities in her kit right right and also like on your team it makes sense for them to want to try to keep you alive because you keep them alive Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um this is interesting though uh one last thing i've also been tracking whether or not my teammates have a mic okay and uh most likely to be talkative is caustic who, if you remember, was the worst player. Oh, hey, guys, <laughs> so, I'm over here. Hey, everybody, look. <laughs> yeah, so least kills in a game and most often having a mic. Go yeah. figure that hey, out. Hey, Chatty Cathy, keep your eyes on the prize. <laughs> <laughs> and then the least likely to have a mic, uh, a mic was Pathfinder, which reinforces his role as a murder bot. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're playing this on the PS4? PS4, that's okay. correct. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So that's uh that's fun stuff. That's Apex Legends um big data in a in a <laughs> nutshell. I have I have a bunch of other ways I could slice it. It's just a matter of parsing it out, but uh I, but, this it's been incredibly fun for me. I mean, part of this and, is like you you've played 136 rounds of this game or whatever the number you gave mm-hmm. was. Yeah. 162. <laughs> 162, please. yes. I didn't mean to steal 30 some odd <laughs> uh plays from But you, you know, I, at an average what's my average survival time? Um an average round for me, la- oh, wow, that's higher than I thought, at last 12 minutes. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's a, yeah, that's a good investment. Nice. I've enjoyed the game. Um, I, I've definitely, again, looking at my statistics, I've kind of peaked, I've plateaued mm-hmm. um, a little bit. So I, I got to either fight through the slump or it's time to go find something else to play. Maybe yeah. EverQuest. <laughs> um, but that's, that's really all I've got. Uh, the one other thing I'll talk about is... I got Slime Rancher as the free game from the Epic Games Store. Oh, Slime Rancher is so good. Well, I'm playing it with Luke and Milo, and they freaking love it. Oh, that is great. Oh, man. Cool. I think you've you've already talked it, uh, not to death, but you've kind of laid out everything I would want to lay out about it. Right. It's just that, you know, a four and a two-year-old get it and love it. Oh, that's that's so good. Do Do they feel bad about keeping the slimes in the pens? No, that hasn't come up yet. Um, they did feel very bad when I was when I said about kind of cleaning up 
the area and I kind of had slimes running everywhere because oh. I did a bad job with my pens. <laughs> I just turned and fired them off into the water. Oh, they were they were not happy with that. I, I, I mean, they, they sound like they, they're having fun when they fly through the air, and you can't actually see them hit the water when they fall yeah. off the edge of the map. So that's I, that's well, that's that's what I told them. It's, oh, they're fine. They're just they're going swimming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the riotous laughter when they made the connection that we were picking up slime poop to sell. <laughs> uh, lasted, it felt like hours. So oh, that is so good. How yeah, did they? Uh, how, how did they like the the, the cat slimes? How do they like the cat slimes? The the, the the cat slimes. Have you found the cat slimes yet? No, we have the tabby slimes. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So they like them, but they're very distressed that they eat chickens. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, have you explained how cats work to them? <laughs> I was just like, you guys have seen them bring up a dead mouse in real life. I don't know how this is hard for you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they uh, that 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 is uh, that and firing slimes off into the ocean are two yeah. low points for them. But everything else so, has been perfectly enjoyable. I've I've seen watched some a little bit of let's play of this game. However, I have actually played it. Are these chicken slimes or just chickens? Just chickens. Yeah. Oddly enough. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, they're not check. They're not chickens. They're hen hens. Yes. Oh well, you know. Well, so 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 so, so there is some very big questions well, the, the, about the, the, reproduction. The, there are but... hen hens and then roostros. You don't want to you don't want to feed too many of your roostros. Yes, uh, that's correct. Yeah, because because uh, because is... one roostro will impregnate many hen, hen hens. Yeah. Yeah, you got. There's a ratio you can keep, and then yeah. I I don't know. I'm not far enough to know if the rock hen hens are different. Or in a meaningful way, I imagine at some point maybe I'll find slimes that will only eat one or the other. But yeah, Dwayne the Rock Hen Hen. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I had a final thought. Oh, it, the the thing, the one actual game thing that I'll talk about, other than it being delightful for yeah. little kids, is it took me forever to notice that there is virtually no animation on the slimes or the hen hens. Like mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, it is a sol solid model that doesn't change. Like the hens little, literally don't have a walking animation. They just mm -hmm. kind of bop around yeah, just in like the a, same way that slimes like Like do. a squish and deform. Yeah. Yeah. And that's <laughs> like how efficient is that? And also it detracts absolutely nothing from the game. Yeah. So man, anyone who's feeling like, excuse me, is feeling like I'm not like an animation master. I, I can't make a game. Dude, they like they they're doing it just fine. Yeah, excellent design. Like makes it so you don't have to work as hard on the other on the other side of it. Yeah. yeah. But that I mean that was literally hours and hours and hours in before I was like, oh, oh, I guess that doesn't <laughs> actually move. It just huh? That's huh. Fan, that's fantastic. I just I mean I played it and I was like, oh yeah, this is a fucking adorable game. I never mm -hmm. would have thought to like, play with a little kid, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it was it was um, very uh, serendipitous that I found it. <laughs> nice so yeah that is that is me cool um i've got one mm -hmm. uh so i have been playing and greatly enjoying an early access game on the epic game store called satisfactory yeah yeah okay I saw... yeah so i talked about this back in e3 last year uh it was announced during the pc game show um, uh, and, uh, they showed it off and it looked extremely my jam. And my impression of it right now is that it, it is extremely my jam. So, um, think of it like 3d factorio, uh, have, have any of you, have either of you played or seen factorio? Is that a, is that a salient comparison? Is that a Zachtronics game? No, uh, you could be um, forgiven for thinking that it is, though, because it does deal uh, primarily with automation and inputs and outputs. Okay. Yeah. I remember looking at it in Let's Plays when I believe it was you and Ben talking yes. about it. Yes, Ben has played this and he's enjoyed it. Um, and he's played Factorio. Uh, this is similar to that. So I'll just explain fact uh, Satisfactory on my, on my own. You are um, a, a pioneer who has been sent by the Fixit Corporation uh, to a uh, an alien land uh, with nothing but a couple of prefab parts. And what you are trying to do is mine and harvest everything you can and build a factory so that you can send um, materials back up either in probes or on a space elevator that you build in order to unlock more uh, blueprints to build more and better things. The idea being that you go from doing everything 
by hand to automating as much as you can. So, you know, you start out with like a chisel and you go and you harvest enough iron to build an automatic miner that you place down and you go and grab the iron out of it um, every time it fills up to using that extra iron uh, to make the parts to build um, a mining facility and powering it, you know, by gathering leaves and, you know, making the fuel that you need to power it uh, and then building conveyor belts. Lots and lots of conveyor belts, so many conveyor belts <laughs> uh, to take to take that ore and smelt it, and then store the ore because you need to have a buffer so that the so that the uh, the lines don't back up and halt production. Uh, and then you take that, you take the 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 ingots and you craft those into various components to make uh, more complex machines. In order to make more complex machines. To the point where you decide, oh, biofuel isn't enough. I need to make an outpost to go mine coal and then <laughs> um, build automated um, trains and trucks in order to move great deals of resources back and forth and set up those routes. Until effectively what you have created is a gigantic um, five kilometer by five kilometer factory um, on this alien world. Um, and it is 100% my jam. I played it for eight hours yesterday. <laughs> I just, I just like fell face first into it. I so thought, at a certain point, you don't need to even move anymore. It sounds like. So is this, uh, is like the the Nirvana in this game? You just get to sit and watch your factory play out. I mean, it becomes the clicker game. I mean, kinda, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you know, like I, I I I set it out and I and I and I automated a good number of the stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, but there's a bottleneck here, so. I, I could just kind of let this go, but I can, I can actually, because this is, because this is 3d, I could build it upwards. And that's a huge deal. You know, it's a huge deal <laughs> in the game because it is, you know, first person, because it is 3d, you can stack your stuff on top of each other and you have to kind of figure out how to build a network of conveyor belts and kind of these switchbacks to move stuff efficiently and then also range out and explore so you can find so you can find more deposits. So like, yeah, the idea is to automate, but like like with any of these, like even with Slime Rancher, like you can automate Slime Rancher quite a bit. There is still tending and there is still mm -hmm. optimization and tweaking that you are doing. And that is the part of this that really, really appeals to me. You know, yes, there is the, um, you know, the, the, that amazing, that amazing moment, uh, that I liken to, uh, in the Simpsons when Mr. Burns loses all of his money, he picks up a can and, you know, like, at least it gets him to recycle. He picks up a can, takes it to the recycling, gets a nickel, uses that nickel to buy a nail, ties that nail to a stick, and then picks up three cans with the nail on the stick. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then eventually he turns, you know, he creates a gigantic factory that uses, that uses six pack rings to to wheel to, or to pull whales out of the ocean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, but that's kind of what the that's kind of what this is. What any what any the of these games are? Dishonored got weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's not as like complex as Factorio is. You know, Factorio has been in development longer. Uh, this game is in early access. Um, you know, so I was discouraged because it wasn't listed on Steam. Now it's on Epic. Um, but uh, I think that there's a lot of room for it to grow. And I think that that third dimension kind of replaces a little bit of that complexity with space management. You know, you do have these efficiencies to establish with trying to fit as much it's almost like circuit design in a weird way. Like when you run out of when you run out of horizontal space, you end up like stacking stuff on top of each other. Um, yeah, it's really cool, and I'm excited. I, norm I normally don't go in for early release games, but I've I've been looking forward to this one for so long that when I got the when I got the email that it was available, I was like, yeah, this is this is probably going to be worth the throw, and <laughs> that is borne out. So are there any kind of baddies or creepers, for lack of a better term, that can, like, come in and mess up your factory? Nothing that I've seen. Um, nothing that I've seen um, that actually will harm what you've made. However, there are um, aliens. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, P 
peaceful. Other ones uh, will kind of charge you and do damage. You do have health. Like there is fall damage. You have to mm. you have to manage that. Um, and how, you know, and it's a little bit like a, it's got a bit of a um, subnautica kind, kind of uh, angle to it. Where mm-hmm. when you kill an alien, you pick up uh, little bits of it, and then you take it back, and you can actually like scan it, and then send back samples back to back to HQ, and they will like take that xenobiology um, readout and send you more blueprints and stuff. So there really is like an encouragement to go out and explore, and there is danger when you're out there. Like you can die, and then it leaves your corpse, and you have to go out and get it. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you lose it forever if you die twice. It's only happened to me once. Um, but yeah, there's no creeper that will actually like set you back. Um, there's nothing that I, nothing like Infectorio. Nothing even as nothing even as hostile as the aliens that you find in, in Factorio who will like come at you when you're in your yeah. in, when you're in your area. Like a, a, nothing has attacked me unless I've unless I've encroached on its on its land. Nice. Okay. So yeah. I, do you think it's losing anything because of that? Or is it like, nope, a game that's purely just about optimization with no friction to that? Or I won't say no friction to that, but like uh, no antagonization to that is is perfectly fine. I I think I think it's perfectly fine. I liken it a little bit to um, weirdly to Stardew Valley. It's not weirdly. They're similar in, mm-hmm. in, in, in lots of ways. But like Stardew Valley has combat and that is a pretty engaging part of that game. But you go to a special area to do it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and as much fun as I am having talking with you guys, I kind of wish I was playing it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. Uh, I, I would, I would recommend, I understand that people are reticent to throw in on a, uh, to throw in on an early access game, but it's stable so far. It's never really crashed. There's some like not optimal graphical things like when certain things kind of collide like there's clipping and things like that ends up looking a little bit awkward but um i'm enjoying it i'm just gonna say if you can optimize it well enough you probably could play it while podcasting uh maybe yeah i could just i could just watch it it could be like a clicker yeah um but yeah that is satisfactory any any questions that you guys have for me about that I no. already got mine. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I love it. Oh, it's it also sounds by... like it's satisfactory. <laughs> yep. Uh... I, I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> 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 I was worried. I, I tweeted yesterday that like, oh, satisfactory is a really neat game. Uh and I was worried that somebody would come back with that. Like, you know, was, so somehow on a tweet that 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 is annoying in a way that it is not annoying when when one of you guys says it to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and that's that's really it. That's that. Uh, that's that's all I've got. I, I, I mean, that's not really it. We finished up. Jaw and I finished up um, Resident Resident Evil Six over the weekend. However, I don't think that there's much more we can we can say about it. Resident Evil Six? No, that is an infinite well of of <laughs> podcasting goodness. I, yeah, you, you, you would think, <laughs> given how given how much a lot of us have talked about it. Um, no, I just, I, I feel like I got, I got out what I, what I wanted. Uh, the, the Ada campaign is worse than I remember. Yeah, it's a bit, that was going to be my one question. Is it as bad as I remember? Yeah. The Ada campaign is, um, dog narts. <laughs> it's not, it's not very good at all. And even the end of Jake and Sherry's campaign, there, there are some real, there's some real rough moments in there from a, from a play and instant death perspective that is real regrettable because those characters are good. And yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I wish that their play ended up working out better. See, I just remember that you get to, uh, fist fight one of the bosses and for me that justified pretty much the whole experience <laughs> yeah uh, ustanak is good the, the the big nemesis guy who comes at you yeah i feel i ironically enough like i would say he was kind of the low points of all the other campaigns he ends up in just because i feel like there's not much justification of him being just straight up immortal yeah but. Yeah, but it's good. It's it's good in Jake and Cherry because that's what their campaign's about in a lot of ways. You know, that like that like that is the the central the the, the central gameplay thing. 
Yep. Yeah. Um, David, how about you? So I have been solely binging the uh, Division Two. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's uh, so I'm 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 definitely um, you know in it deep. It has has its claws in. Um, oh, I'm not sure exactly what what all to uh, say about it, other than um, it continues to uh, have have pretty much no plot. Okay. Uh, which is interesting, which, I mean, in a weird way, I suppose is technically probably makes it more realistic. <laughs> in that there, 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 there is no story, actually, to a gigantic right. disaster and the right. horrible I aftermath. Mean, yeah, I mean, all the things you're doing are basically just... All right, you solve this, but you know these, uh, you know some faction of horrible people have you know now taken over this, or you know oh we've got food, but now we need you know electricity so that you know we don't have to turn off the lights um, as soon as it gets dark. Hmm. Or wait, you would think that'd be the other way around. <laughs> I was going but... to say, there's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so um, I will. Um, I know how 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 much can I talk about spoilery stuff in a game that like? I mean, you just said it has no story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So I I did um, I did uh, save the president. So that was kind of interesting. Cool. The pre um, the president of what? Of the United States. Huh. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it does, you know, it takes place in Washington, D.C. and kind of the plot line is, um, Air Force, uh, one gets, um, you know, shot down sometime before the events of the game and, you know, it's assumed everyone's dead and then you eventually get a mission to go in and, um, you know, you know, one of the factions has something that you think, uh, that they're you know, hiding that you think is like a super weapon. And it turns out it's actually just like they've captured the president and for our holding him hostage. Okay. So, uh, it's also kind of interesting because, uh, you know, the president is very much like, you know, uh, you know, old white dude and, you know, is very much in the, um, you know, I'm, I'm predominantly worried about, um, or at least before the disaster, like I'm predominantly worried about the economy type of president. Okay. Uh, but then when you actually get to the place, the first thing you see is him, like when, when you distract, you know, when one of the guards is distracted by you suddenly bursting in him, like disarming him, taking his gun and start like, shooting people alongside you oh, which geez. is kind of interesting yeah no so th so this takes place in the saints row universe yeah, yeah you know me too. as as you do <laughs> um it's yeah it's so and then you're then I informed that um he that apparently someone had before the outbreak someone had developed a um uh, a drug that could cure all viruses and um <laughs> they had just i apparently decided only to use it in an emergency uh, <laughs> um, and so now like that's honestly probably the point where like 44 percent into the game like that's technically speaking probably the plot okay um, if they haven't but, used it yet, what quali what qualifies as an emergency? Well, I mean, the problem is again. Apparently, uh, he was carrying it in a briefcase, like nuke code style, oh. when it got shot down. Okay. Um, but it does raise the question of like, one, like, why didn't you use this to literally revolutionize human healthcare? Yeah. So, um, yeah, Shh, just keep shooting people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also feel like, um, it's interesting, kind of one of the things I'm sort of, um, 
I quote unquote kind of watching uh, just to see is to what degree, uh, you know, I feel like it plays out the sort of sub story of the um, fact that this is a game that's quote unquote um, not political. And overall, I feel like they get a lot of mileage um, in terms of not being political by, you know, not having a plot. Um, but, you know, the f- True Sons faction that I think I mentioned last time, that's yeah. the straight up, like, um, oh, basically angry um, law enforcement officers and, like, rogue military and stuff. Yeah. Like, there's definitely some things that are... I, I just I can't I can't believe that a thing with Tom Clancy's name on it even posthumously is apolitical. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just so, I don't know. Like yeah, yeah. So I guess what I'd say is like there's definitely things where if you look at, for example, some of the boss uh profiles, it's very much like I um earlier today took down one of their guys that like um, you know, claim to be a um, oh, descendant of Thomas Jefferson and decided to, like, start up a plantation and, like, is kidnapping people to force them to work on. It's like, eh, that's a little bit political. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, so it's it's very much like they are definitely sort of the... Um, the bad side, uh, the bad kind of alt right side of the survivalist, uh, you know, kind of uh, movement. Yeah. Um, they're also just kind of laughably, or I don't know if laughably, they strike me as being very strangely evil. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, by by which I mean though, there's a difference between like. And I realize to a certain degree, this is this is kind of the entire point of like, hey, the alt right makes no sense. Okay. But like, um, being like, I'm super into um, to uh, you know, Morica, and I'm going to protect it. But the first thing we need to do is get rid of all these freedoms. Yeah. Like, makes, I mean, I guess as as I say it, it's like, no, that that really is why the alt right makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, so yeah, um, I don't know. Other, other than that though, it's, um, other than the plot just being weird, it's a lot of fun. Um, I just had a mission that was set in, um, basically the NASA headquarters Hmm. and, um, it, for some reason, I don't know why some developer decided this was like something that he needed to develop assets specifically to. Mm-hmm. But uh, throughout the um, uh, level, there's several copying machines that you can like go up and make them uh, print out like the last document they received. And they're all these like memes just making fun of flat earth theory. Okay. Um, it's, it's, and you know, it's, so, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel like this is one of those things where the more I talk about this game, the more nonsense it sounds, but like, <laughs> it really is a great game. Yeah. So, I mean, have, have there been any missions that like, um, break the mechanical mold a little bit? Like, you know, um, like, has there been anything that is like real standout for you in terms of what it's asking you to do? Um, I think a lot of it, um, probably its biggest thing, um, that it gets would be the, the actual settings. Um, so there's a whole series of missions that are basically, uh, you retaking, uh, the various, uh, Smithsonian museums. Okay. And so those are really (laughs) neat because, you know, there's, uh, you know, all the set pieces with like, you know, the air and space museum where, you know, like, uh, um, <laughs> you, you throw a grenade into the spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is one of the things that's kind of, 
I would say, like, to the degree this game sometimes has feels, that that is one of one of them in that there are a, a number of situations where it's like, oh, yeah, so, for example, in the Air and Space Museum, basically this, like, alt-right faction is just stripping down America's history to make, uh, you know, weapons. And it's like, mm. oh, that's kind of depressing. Yeah. But um, the one one of the ones that's actually really neat is I forget what it's act. I think it's like the Viewpoint Museum, which is like a museum of journalism. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> a lot of the set pieces are basically um, oh like recreations of like newsroom sound stages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, the real, you know, you know, exaggerated like lighting and, um, you know, kind of facade, uh, you know, facades that you can hide behind and things like that. So it's a really neat experience. Um, there's similarly, uh, you have a shootout in, in the air and space level in the uh, planetarium. So it's, uh, you know, you trying to like aim while you know, trippy, like, lighting effects are going off all over the place. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it uh, you know, it, it definitely has its moments. Um, I, I forget if I asked you this question the last time you talked about this. What kind of character are you playing? So, um, right now, um, you, you start out basically just playing a generic, uh, you know, character, and you don't actually get um a specific class until you reach the level cap okay um right now i tend to go with um a either a shotgun and a long range rifle uh you know some sort of like pseudo sniper rifle mm -hmm. although i tend to um when when i do that i tend to um set it up more like a hunting rifle uh so you know kind of a more conventional setup uh however lately i've been experimenting with a lot the um oh light machine guns which kind of their special thing is one they behave a lot like assault rifles but they have um a maximum range uh, more similar to a sniper rifle and also they um dramatically quicker um will basically suppress enemies so you know if you fire on an enemy for a couple se uh, for about a second it'll force them to stay behind cover for a few seconds hmm. so um and that's turned out to be really really important when playing solo yeah so hmm think you're yeah. gonna see it through to the level cap um, yeah, I think so. I'm I'm at level eighteen out of thirty now. Mm -hmm. That that uh, it's a big as assumption that the level cap does not get expanded before you reach it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although it seems like the way they're more doing is kind of like an alternate advancement type thing, where my understanding is once you get to the level cap, you know, like I said, that's when you actually. Um, unlock the classes and then you're basically leveling up the class abilities ah hmm. uh, okay that's right um yeah although i do know also for example that there's um one of the the game has four factions and one of them doesn't even show up until um after you've completed the main game so uh there's definitely a lot of um a lot of content available. We'll see how long it, you know, kind of holds my interest. Yeah. So, oh, uh, one other thing, actually, I wanted to call out that I think is kind of neat is um, game has crazy, crazy um, comprehensive both um, oh configuration options in general and also accessibility options. Cool. Um, so. Uh, you know, the whole, you know, various color blind modes and closed captioning and stuff. And something I've never seen before is if you want, it will actually, um, oh, like voiceover read all of the, uh, all of the in-game menus for you. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, definitely something where, you know, they, they definitely put some, put some effort into those features, which is pretty cool. Nice. Yep. Always like seeing that happen. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have any other questions about it. I'm happy you're having a good time with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. A lot. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how do you feel about buttoning it up? Buttons. buttons. There we go. Whoa, buttons from David. The credit. Uh, he, he's, he's been he's been giving us buttons these past few times. You know, if you <laughs> if you can't if you can't um, beat them, button them. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening to this uh, level number two eighty. That is a lot of levels. Um, I am led to believe. So, um, what's up, Greta? Sorry, she's just kind of meowing at me from the window. So <laughs> I need to go take care of my cat. So you know the things you can do. You can go to patreon.com slash the level podcast. You can tell your friends about the show. Ratings or reviews are good. Um, and just generally keep on listening. We're really happy to have you. Um, am I forgetting mm -hmm. anything? No, I, uh, I'm... I will have to check back in when I'm at uh, a significantly higher percentage of Apex Legends games with more data yes. updates here. Yes, uh, I need to. Yeah, wait. What's what's your p value? Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to see when you regress to the mean. Please don't play enough for it to regress to the mean. <laughs> I think you've got I, a family. I'm so close to the mean already on kill death ratio and <laughs> placements. It's uh, I'm pretty much there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I've been Cole Ross. You can watch my uh, my streams on Twitch at Duckfeed TV. I've been Dennis Spuria. You can watch my um, statistically proven mediocre Apex Legends play <laughs> on Green Laser 73 at Twitch. I am currently David Moneysmith in uh, New York City. Presumably, I'll continue to be David Moneysmith. I may or may not continue to be in New York City. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Ooh, come back to Cincinnati. We'll hang out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and oh, how do I end this? How do I end this show? Uh, so until next time, stick around for some titles. So who has titles? Uh, I have, where's my phone? Two. I have three. Okay. Um, I have Betray Confirm. <laughs> I have Wholesome Things Rule. Okay. And then I had, this is not a direct quote, but it's it's Raising an Army of Cuckoos. <laughs> or how do you say? Cuckoos? Cuckoos? I don't know. I, I don't know how it's from, to. Uh, from, um, yeah, not, yeah, The Legends from, of Zelda. From one. Zelda, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. David, you got any? So as I threatened, I only have, was it beefy gassy boy? <laughs> <laughs> I refuse, but you can still submit it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I have, I big dated myself. <laughs> uh, how do you guys feel about I big dated myself? That's pretty good. Yeah. I enjoy yep. it. Cool. Done. Cool. All right. I'm going to go play some satisfactory. Cool. All right. See ya. Acceptable. <laughs> uh, take care. Have a good week, guys. Mm -hmm. You Bye. too.